Good morning. We're just waiting, waiting for uh, Councillor Fitzgerald. Is Jason with us? Chair Stoney is here as an attendee. I've invited him to come in, but he perhaps just isn't at his computer at this moment. All right, well, we'll just give him a couple seconds. There he is. I made it. I, I somehow joined and got disconnected. So here I am again. Wonderful. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. All right. I'd like to call this meeting to order and welcome everyone to the hearing. This meeting is being held electronically in accordance with Section 238 of the Municipal Act 2001. The procedures for the meeting as per the town's procedural bylaw and the electronic meeting protocol. And I do confirm that all of committee is here. I would like to respectfully acknowledge that we are on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabeg under the terms of the Roberts, Robinson Huron Treaty, number 61 of 1850, and the Williams Treaties of 1923. We commit to acknowledge, learn, educate, create opportunity, honor sacred places, and take actions toward real truth and reconciliation in support of our commitment to walking the path together in respect, peace, and harmony for future generations. And I have a motion. Moved by Jason Fitzgerald, seconded by Kenneth Donald. Be it resolved that the Committee of Adjustment agenda dated November 10, 2021, be hereby adopted as printed and circulated. All in favor? And that's carried. Are there any disclosures of pecuniary interest? Thank you. Moved by Helena Renwick, seconded by Brandon Stapleton. Be it resolved that the Committee of Adjustment meeting minutes dated October 13, 2021, and the recommendations contained therein uh, are hereby adopted as printed and circulated. All in favor? And that's carried. All right, I'd like to welcome everyone to the public meetings to consider applications for minor variances to the zoning bylaw. The input received by agencies, public and staff is important in order for the committee to make sound planning decisions. The procedure to be followed in these meetings will be as follows. A brief explanation of the application and any correspondence received to date will be given by staff. The applicant or the representative will be asked to provide any additional comments without repeating the information already outlined by staff. Any members of the public present will then be permitted to ask questions or provide comments respecting the applications. Any persons making representation are requested to first state their name and mailing address. Please note that presentations are limited to 10 minutes. Once the hearing is concluded, the input received will be considered by the committee prior to making a decision on the applications. If you wish to be notified of a decision of the committee, you must file a written request for notification. And Adam is going to speak to the Wingler application on Enna Drive. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good to share my screen. Mm -hmm. Is everyone able to see that all right? We are. Excellent. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, the subject lands are located at 255 Ena Drive on Harp Lake. Uh, they're currently zoned shoreline residential four and they're designated waterfront in the official plan. The purpose of the minor variance application is to seek relief from the zoning bylaw to reduce the front yard setback from 30 meters to 21 meters. It's to facilitate a, an addition to the existing cottage as well as a deck addition. Uh, you can see here on the sketch or site plan provided, uh, this light kind of L-shaped box indicates the existing footprint 
This dark area is the addition to the proposed cottage and this light gray area is the deck. In support of the application, the applicants completed a fish habitat assessment completed by Riverstone Environmental to address the fish habitat, uh, which confirmed that it is type two fish habitat and no negative impacts would result uh, from the proposed development if the applicants committed to some uh, revegetation of ground cover. Uh, the applicants have amended their site plan accordingly and have identified areas of uh, revegetation as well. As a result, staff are satisfied that the proposal does meet the intent of our policies and further a condition be included to incorporate the recommendations from this report through site plan control. Uh, the application was circulated in accordance with the Planning Act. No comments were received. Uh, staff are satisfied that the application meets the four tests for a minor variance and are satisfied that the committee could recommend approval of said application. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thanks very much. I'll call on the applicant or representative to make any comments. Members of the public are reminded to use the raise hand button or press star nine if they're connected by phone to indicate that they would like to address committee. And Chair Stone, I do see one hand raised. Okay. Please note that during the transition, your video panel will be momentarily interrupted. Once you've been added to the meeting, your video will appear in the committee member panel. Please have your microphone and video, if possible, turned on before you begin speaking and confirm your name and mailing address. Hi, um, Eric Wingler. I'm the applicant. I can address any questions or... If you want me to speak to any of our, our desires here, I can do that as well. Um, only if you have something different uh, to say than, than what Adam presented. Okay, nope, then I think, uh, I think Adam adequately covered it. Wonderful. Then if you uh, just uh, turn your video off, stay with us and uh, I will go to the public. Is there any member of the public that wishes to speak to this application? Members of the public are reminded to use the raise hand button to indicate that they would like to address committee. And Chair Stone, I can confirm there are no hands raised. Thank you very much. Committee members, any comments or questions? You're making it easy on me. Moved by Brandon Stapleton, seconded by Jason Fitzgerald. Be it resolved that minor variance application A, 40 2021 HTE be approved. The purpose and effect of which is to provide relief from subsections 3.5.1 and 5.3.4 of the Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw 2008-66P in order to reduce the minimum front yard setback from 30 meters to 21 meters for a 24.7 square meter addition to an existing dwelling and attached 20.9 square meter deck only. Conditional on, the owner amending their site plan to the satisfaction of the town of Huntsville to, to incorporate the recommendations of the fish habitat assessment prepared by Riverstone Environmental Solutions dated June 10, 2021. Any comments or questions? All in favor. And that's carried. All right. Thanks, Adam. This is Eric Wingler again. I imagine I can drop off now. Yes, that's right. Very good. Thank you Thank very you. much. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Uh, Kelsey, you speak to the, to the burger application on Monahan Drive. Yes, I am. Thank you. I'll just prepare my screen. Can everyone see that? Yes, we can. Awesome. Great, well, good morning, everyone. And thank you again, Mr. Chair. Through you, the subject property is located at 362 Monahan Drive. The lot is designated residential and is zoned natural resource and rural two. 
The application has been submitted to permit the construction of a two-story addition with attached garage to a single detached dwelling. A minor variance is required to reduce the rear yard setback from 10 meters to two meters, reduce the setback from type one fish habitat from 30 meters to 20 meters, and reduce the setback from a cold water stream from 30 meters to 20 meters as well. Based on the configuration of the property, the reduced setback is expected to have minimal impact on the surrounding properties as the rear yard abuts a well-vegetated rear yard to the north, and the addition is proposed in an already cleared area with surrounding vegetation. Looking at the official plan, the residential designation encourages a broad mixture of tenure, affordability, and housing types, and residential intensification throughout the built-up area where existing infrastructure and services are available. In this instance, the proposed addition redevelops an existing single detached dwelling in conformity with the residential designation. When looking at the natural constraint mapping, we can see tier, uh, deer wintering habitat stratum two and a cold water stream with type one fish habitat. To address these natural constraints, a water course and deer wintering habitat assessment were, were completed, was completed by Riverstone Environmental Solutions to assess the potential impacts of the reduced setbacks. The author concludes that the proposed development will have no negative impacts on fish and fish habitat or deer wintering habitat, provided that the report's mitigation recommendations are implemented. Recommendations include construction mitigation measures, to further uh, minimize the disturbance to the watercourse and fish habitat, revegetation and retention of vegetation around these features, and restriction of new development to existing cleared areas. And these are to be implemented through site plan control should the minor variance be approved. The application was circulated in accordance with the Planning Act uh, and Two letters of support were received and were provided to committee prior to this meeting. Building, the building department had no objections. However, they noted the footprint um, needs to be pinned by an OLS. Looking at all these aspects, the application would appear to be in conformity um, with the official plan and be consistent with the provincial policy statement. Additionally, the application appears to satisfy the four tests of minor variance and therefore staff are recommending approval. Thank you so much, and I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Thanks very much. Uh, I'll call on the applicant or representative to make any comments about this. The applicant or their representative are reminded to use the raised hand button to indicate that they would like to address committee. And Chair Stone, I do see one hand raised. Okay. A reminder to please have your microphone and video if possible turned on before you begin speaking and confirm your name and mailing address. Good morning, uh, members of committee. Uh, John P. Gallagher, John P. Gallagher and Associates, 24 Hibbard Road, Huntsville, P1H, 1C9. And I believe uh, Scott uh, Berger is also following along with us and he may wanna say a few words afterwards. I think uh, Kelsey has outlined the application quite well. We met with uh, Kelsey and pre-consulted on the application. Uh, one of the items that uh, staff the uh, deer wintering and the impact on the water course assessment. Um, as you can see on the air photos, the location is at the end of a private right-of-way being Monaghan Drive and there's no further dwellings beyond it. Uh, with respect to the setback um, on the uh, north side, the parcel um, to the north is, uh, the dwelling is orientated onto high view. So it's approximately 84 meters from the proposed addition uh, on the site. And uh, given that location, uh, it's deemed in, uh, to have minimal impact on the uh, adjacent lands. Part of uh, looking at the location was trying not to disturb any areas or grades. It's nice and flat through there and uh, grassed area currently. Uh, with the size of the addition, it's minor insofar as the lot coverage is, would be combined approximately 5% of the, the lot. 
the building is on full municipal services, so water and sewer uh, services. It's not on septic and it can, it can accommodate the use proposed. With regards to the uh, setback uh, with respect to the water course in the Deer Winter Yard, uh, the biologist has reviewed it and provided uh, recommendations as uh, Kelsey outlined. Uh, one of the uh, positive features, even though it's not sort of related to the location of the garage, but further south on the existing lot, there is some uh, cleared areas and as part of uh, that approval, there'll be some revegetation as you're aware. Gypsy Bill Creek is a cold water stream. So anything we can do to uh, maintain temperatures uh, through there is a positive uh, feature. Um, a single family dwelling is permitted use in this area. So we're basically adding on to the existing uh, dwelling that has legally existed on the lot. Um, and it's logical to allow for an addition in the same general area of the proposal. Uh, the property is being built outside the lands that are currently zoned NR, and it's approximately 90 feet from the westerly uh, side yard. It uh, keeps the, it meets the intent of the OP by utilizing the existing dwelling and property. Uh, the location of the addition is in an area that has the least impact on the lot. We didn't want to have to start cutting down through the hillsides and adding on to uh, the south portion of the uh, dwelling. It is currently cleared and it makes for a logical sense for the addition. Uh, the buffer uh, between the uh, proposed uh, addition and the water course will be retained. A majority of that is uh, located off site uh, on the adjacent uh, property. Um, the built form does not dominate the landscape. The roof line is in keeping with the existing roof line of the building. So now it would be a L-shaped uh, building and uh, which are also below the height required under the zoning bylaw. And uh, like I said previously, it's at the end of a road. Uh, there are no other dwellings. Uh, Application has been supported by staff, the district, uh, the MTO support the application and the applicant has provided uh, two letters of support. Um, and I'd be glad to answer any questions and he may want to say a few words as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'll give Mr. Berger an opportunity to raise his hand virtually if he wishes to speak. Chair Stoney has raised his hand, so I will bring him in. Thank you. <clears throat> Is that better? I can hear you. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, if you can just make a quick comment. Yeah. Um, recently, I moved my family up here. I, I grew up in Huntsville, and uh, I've come back to stay here for the long haul. Um, I'm a contractor. I do deal in converting residential homes into multifamily homes for uh, more affordable housing. And the reason I'm looking for the garage is obviously I have an awful lot of tools and equipment that I need to get through in, in doing this. And uh, that was the main purpose in building the garage. Um, where the garage is being located is on the existing driveway. Uh, there isn't a piece of grass that will be touched in uh, where it's going to sit. And, um, you know, it's my first experience with this. So I, uh, I don't know if I have anything really else to say other than this would really benefit my business and I think uh, you know some people in town as well. All right thank you very much. Uh, at this time I will ask the public any member of the public that has any comments. Members of the public are reminded to use the raise hand button to indicate that they would like to address committee. And Chair Stone I see no hands raised. 
Thank you very much. Committee members, any comments or questions? Mr. Donald. Thank you, Chair Stone. Is it just for my own enlightenment through you um, to Kelsey? I think you used the phrase pinned by an OLS. Can you explain what that means, please? Yes, for sure. Through you, Mr. Chair. It just means that when, especially in these more sensitive setbacks, when we're looking at cold water streams, um, that they'll be pinned and confirmed by a surveyor just to ensure that they're appropriately set back. Thank you. Excellent. Any other comments? All right, seeing none. Moved by Kenneth Donald, seconded by Helena Renwick. Be it resolved that minor variance application A41-2021 HTE be approved. Purpose and effect of which is to provide relief from subsections 3.5.1 and 5.8.4 of the Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw 2008-66P. In order to reduce the rear yard setback from 10 meters to two meters, reduce the setback from type one fish habitat from 30 meters to 20 meters and reduce the setback from a cold water stream from 30 meters to 20 meters, all for a 173 square meter, two-story dwelling addition with attached garage. Conditional on all recommendations contained within the water course and deer wintering habitat assessment prepared by Riverstone Environmental Solutions, Inc., dated August 31st, 2021, being implant, implemented through site plan, a site plan agreement to the satisfaction of the town of Huntsville. Any comments or questions? All in favor? And that's carried. Thank you, have a nice day. Thanks. All right, uh, Kelsey, you're going to speak to the night application on Fox Lake Road. Yes, thank you. I'll just prepare my screen. Great. I think that should be working. It is. Awesome. So I'll just start. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, the subject property is located at 393 West Fox Lake Road. The lot is designated waterfront and is zoned shoreline residential one. The application has been submitted. Uh, for the reconstruction of a non-complying dryland boathouse uh, with the addition of a marine rail. The minor variance is required to reduce the interior side yard setback uh, from six meters to 3.2 meters for the dryland boathouse, to reduce the setback from type one fish habitat from 30 meters to zero meters for the dryland boathouse and marine rail, and to permit the dryland boathouse to be located closer to the shoreline than the principal dwelling. The dryland boathouse currently sits closer to the shoreline than the principal dwelling and is one meter from the northern property line. The SR1 zone requires a six meter interior side yard setback for accessory structures. The purpose of this provision is to ensure adequate distancing between development on abutting lots and to create a buffer between properties. The existing non-complying dry house of Dryland Boathouse is to be relocated further from the northern property line than its existing setback. Additionally, the Dryland dry Boathouse will be buffered by existing vegetation and placed in a cleared portion of the property of the amenity area. In keeping with the waterfront designation, the proposal also relocates the existing Dryland Boathouse to into a more suitable and appropriate location. Looking at the natural constraints, the property is on a warm water lake with unevaluated fish habitat. Fish habitat, um, the official plan allows for a lesser setback um, than 20 meters, provided no negative environmental and visual impacts are anticipated. A fish habitat assessment was completed by Terra Story Environmental Inc. Based on their observations, the shoreline uh, the authors, the report's author characterized the shoreline abutting the property as both type one and type two fish habitat. The report concludes no negative impacts will occur provided the technical recommendations are implemented in full for the dryland boathouse and the marine rail. Recommendations including the implementation of construction mitigation measures such as installing a sediment fence, uh, minimizing the area of exposed soil and revegetating um, 
prior to disturbing uh, the priorly disturbed area associated with the former location of the dryland boathouse and locating the marine rail within the less sensitive type two fish habitat. Uh, these will be implemented through site plan control should a minor variance be approved. The application was circulated in accordance with the Planning Act and to the Fox Lake Association. Two letters of support were provided to committee prior to this meeting for your review. The application would appear to conform to the intent of the official plan and be consistent with the provincial policy statement. Additionally, the application appears to conform with satisfy the four tests of a minor variance and therefore staff are recommending approval. Thank you so much and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Um, I'll call on the applicant or representative to make any comments. The applicant or their representative are reminded to use the raise hand button to indicate that they would like to address committee. And Chair Stone, I do see one hand raised. Okay. A reminder to please have your microphone and video if possible turned on before you begin speaking and confirm your name and mailing address. Uh, good morning, can everyone hear me okay? Yes, we can. Great. My name is Bill Knight, I'm the applicant. Uh, my mailing address is 2369 Awenda Drive, Oakville, Ontario, L6H7R6. Uh, I just would like to thank the committee for considering my application and I would like to thank the town staff and especially Kelsey for helping me as I'm a homeowner, I'm not uh, a professional at this. So uh, it was very helpful to the town staff. And I don't really have anything to add for that Kelsey said, and I'm available for questions if there are any. That's perfect. If you could uh, simply turn your video off, I'm gonna ask the public if they have any questions. And Chair Stone, we have no one else present in the meeting at this time. Well, that answers that. Committee members, any comments or questions? <clears throat> Kelsey, can you, uh, for my, uh, my own edification, can you describe marine rail? Is it two little train tracks going from the boathouse to the water? I believe in this case, it was one rail going into the water, but I'll allow the applicant to clarify if that's not the truth. <laughs> sure, I, I, I'm interested if uh, Mr. Knight could come back. Uh, I'm, I'm still here, should I start my video again or do you want me to? Yeah, please. Video? Yeah. Um, so the marine rail uh, is, is I, I believe it's, yes, one track that goes in the water. I've been doing some research and, and con contacting a couple companies. Um, I haven't gone any farther than that yet because obviously I'm waiting to, to get the approval for that. But it's very minimal uh, invasiveness in the water. So it's, it's literally, you know, it's, it's better than even a pole dock, right? Because it just basically sits on poles uh, in the water. So uh, it, it is a, a, a track with, um, almost a V that the boat sits in. You drive the boat to it, and then you 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 know either hand or or by power you you pull it. It pulls into the boathouse. So it's a bit of a unique thing. But uh, the reason why I'm so interested in this, I'm not sure if everybody's aware, but Fox Lake has no public boat launches on it, um, and so we're always uh, dependent on the, uh, the Camp Winnebago to provide their um, their their launch for us, which they do always but you know i don't know what's going to happen in the future so i'm trying to sort of solve an issue uh you know so that myself so i can put in there that's very cool thank you very much it's the first one i've uh, come across thank you um so if you can bring your take your video down for us if there's no other questions moved by jason fitzgerald seconded by kenneth donald be it resolved that minor variance application a 42 2021 HTE be approved. The purpose and effect of which is to provide relief from subsections 3.1.18.10 and 5.3.4 of the Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw 2008-66P in order to reduce the interior side yard setback from six meters to 3.2 meters for a 26.8 square meter dry land boathouse. Reduce the setback from type one fish habitat from 30 meters to zero meters for a dry land boathouse and marine rail, and permit the dryland boathouse to be closer to the shoreline than the principal dwelling. Conditional on, all recommendations contained within the fish habitat assessment prepared by Terra Story Environmental Consulting Inc. dated October 14, 
2021 being implemented through site plan agreement to the satisfaction of the town of Huntsville. Any questions? All in favor. And that's carried. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Kelsey. You very much. Now that all comments have been received, I declare these public meetings respecting the above applications to be concluded. And under new business, um, Director Maxwell is going to speak to something. Thank you, Chair Stone. Um, just to note that the application that had been refused by committee in October for Wilson, the King Crescent retaining wall, has been appealed to the Ontario Land Tribunal. So we will provide an update um, moving forward as to what that looks like, but just so the committee was aware. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Um, I have nothing else. So there, therefore I move that Helena, moved by Helena Renwick, seconded by Brandon Stapleton. Be it resolved that we do now adjourn at 9.31. That's some good time. 9.31 a.m. All in favor. <laughs>